Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I got the recap to Love Island Australia Season 3 Episode 7. If you have not watched the full episode, it is right on this channel now. I'm posting the full episodes first and then coming back after you guys had a chance to watch and recap. But before we get into this recap and unpack everything, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. If you like the videos, smash the like button and feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's jump into this recap. So Jess is still playing games because now the drama is spilling over into this episode as it was spilling over from the previous two episodes with regards to her back and forth between uh, Taku and Aaron. Now, she was originally with Aaron. Then in the recoupling ceremony, she coupled up with Taku. Now she's back with Aaron. Well, she's interested in getting to know Aaron. And Aaron is definitely all open for it. I think he's a fool for doing this because this girl don't know what she wants. And I can guarantee you probably when the next hot guy pops into the villa, drops into the villa, whatever, however he gets there, this girl is going to be keeping her eyes open to other folks. But Aaron, he's not afraid of the risk, as he says. But... He need to open his eyes because this girl is not going to be 100 with him. I mean, he, you guys did not have a connection in the beginning. She dropped you for a Taku, and then Taku decides to have a conversation with her as well. He like, you got me out here looking real silly right now because I originally, you know, coupled up with you. And she's like, well, I don't want to be locked down to anybody. Um, I need to keep my options open so I can, you know, get to know other people in the villa. But she's not saying Aaron. Go figure. And, of course, that's making him feel some kind of way. And then she had to know to say her feelings is hurt because of the fact that he wants to take a step back from her. And... Oh, she was like, oh, he said all those beautiful things to me in the coupling ceremony. And now my feelings is hurt because now he wants to take a step back. Of course, he don't want to stay as an around in your orbit if you're going to be going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then drop both of them probably for the next hot guy. It's still early in the season. And this is definitely reiterated when Taku has a conversation with Ronnie about this, you know, and Ronnie is like, look, dude, this girl is going to be with you today or with Aaron today. And then when she with Aaron tomorrow, it's going to be you and back and forth and back and forth. And I agree with Ronnie. And Ronnie was pretty much like, look, dude, you need to step away from this because this here is crazy. And I don't blame him because Jess gets mad. She wants to control everything around her, right? And let her do her, but everybody else got to stay in place and be ready when she ready. Mm, no, they don't have to do that. This is, as he says, what was the statement he says? Um, a trial and error island. This ain't, this is love island, not trial and error island. And then she dumped Taku at bedtime and ended up sleeping with Aaron outside or near the pool in that little, I don't know what they call that little bed out there. And, of course, he's disappointed, but at the same time, he needed to know this. I'm glad he found out now before his feelings got even deeper for this girl. So, I think it was for the best for uh, Taku to move on, but Aaron is going to get a rude awakening. Just wait till that next hot guy comes into the villa. Speaking of Ronnie, Ronnie and Courtney had a little bit of drama because Ronnie was running around dancing with Ari. And so, um, Ronnie was having some conversation with some of the other Islanders saying that he was actually feeling some kind of way about Ari, that they are, as he call it, like both equivalent to each other. And, you know, he's building a connection and it seemed like Ari is building a connection with him as well. I actually see, just in my opinion, I actually see more um, chemistry 
with both Ari and Ronnie. Let me know what you think. I don't know about Courtney. Courtney had her head in the stars a few episodes ago because all the guys were interested in her. And, of course, that ship has sailed, especially with Emily coming into the villa. But we'll talk about her a little bit later. But Courtney was feeling some kind of way because when they were doing the little dance skit that both Ari and Ronnie was teaching the rest of the Islanders, she just got up and walked off. And he was like, uh, I'm dancing with Ari. I'm not dancing with you. So I think you need to get over it. No, he didn't say that. But she had to at this point because he was focused on Ari at this point. But I am glad that he did have a conversation with... um you know, with Courtney to let her know where he stood and where his interests lie. Because like he said, he didn't want Courtney to be blindsided every time he is intimately having conversation with Ari. And I thought that was pretty cool to do because, you know, for him to just be doing that in front of her, and I think they are coupled up right now, but his interest lies elsewhere. She needs to know that because therefore that allows her the opportunity to start opening up doors for herself to see if she, you know, can spark interest with anybody else that's available. Now, right now, I don't think there is anyone available, you know, because there's an extra girl on the island. But at least he did let her know. And, um, you know, of course, uh, Ronnie did have a chat with, with Ari as well. And he you know, he's interested in her and to start kissing and cuddling. And she's definitely open for that. So we'll see where these two go. But in my opinion, I think it's a go for Ronnie and Ari. Oh, boy, guys, can we talk about this sad little face right here? Can you believe that that is a face of somebody that just got through having great sex with her coupling? Yeah, Chris and Rachel did the do the night before, and this is the result. Let's talk about this situation. So, she got in her feelings because she kind of felt whatever she perceived in her head that Chris wasn't interacting in a way that he should have been to make her feel some kind of way as of being special. And that he was saying how nice the other girls look along with what he was telling her. And she said, well, if you tell everybody else how good they look, then that means nothing to me when you tell me how good I look. Let me tell you something. What I saw was her self-sabotaging. She feels that she is falling for this guy. And because she has all of these trust issues, which she did bring up in a conversation with Chris because of her past bad relationships that she's speaking and kind of projecting everything on to him and she's making it up in her head she's creating this narrative he's just going to be like the rest of these guys look how he's acting look how he's moving and Chris is like wait a minute every time I do something it's always wrong how's it my fault all the time and so he got up and left. He was about tired. He's like, I tell this girl how pretty she is. I think the world of her. I thought I met my person. He is really into Rachel. But Rachel is, she got to get, she got issues going on. However, they were able to turn it around because Chris had a conversation with one of the other Islanders. And they told him, you know, she's dealing with some past issues. I think it was Aaron that told him. And that he needs to have a conversation with her to give her as much reassurance as possible. Now, as much as I do agree with that, she still got to learn how to feel about herself and that she's worthy to be in any relationship. Chris could tell her all day, every day for the next decade. And if she doesn't feel it within herself, it means nothing. So I'm glad that they were able to salvage you know, and so he came back, he apologized, he acknowledged her feelings. He said, well, I'll do whatever you want me to do to make you feel special and secure. I'm that guy for you. And she was good with that. But uh, honestly, I do think that Rachel has to deal with those issues because they're going to come up once again. 
They're not going to go anywhere or else he's going to get exhausted trying to reassure her all the freaking time. Even though he, you know, he should at some, you know, for the most part. But she also has to feel that way about herself in a relationship. So we'll see how far they go. Okay, so let's talk about bombshell Emily. And she has really been keeping her eye out on her top pick, which is Mitch. However, Mitch is coupled up with Tina. And Tina, you know, as much as she is hanging in there, she's still feeling some kind of way about it. But she's not being overly emotional or possessive about it. The thing is that I found interesting that Mitch said to the guys about Emily and Tina is that Emily is hot, flirtatious, she's the bomb, and that with Tina, when during the day when they're hanging out, she's like one of the guys, but at night, she's ultra sexy in how they cuddle up and do things in the bed, so... That's the interesting thing. I'm wondering what's going to win out with these two. Because, honestly, Mitch is, I mean, Mitch is in hot water. He got to figure out what he wants to do. Is he going to stick it out and, and keep it with Tina? Which Aaron says he needs to just stay with that. Because, honestly, well, stay with her. Oh, my God. I'm sorry about that. Stay with that situation. That coupling. But um, otherwise, I honestly believe because Emily knows what she got. She knows how to flirt. She has ultra confidence. Who's to say the next hot guy that comes into that villa? Because it's still kind of early that Emily would dump Mitch for the next hot guy that comes in. Just like Jess. So, I think... You know, some people might say stick, sticking it out with Tina, it might be just safe. But I honestly think that's where he needs to stay put. Because if it hadn't worked before they got to the villa, I mean, what means that, what, what, how, what does it mean if it's, or how should I put this? If it didn't work before the villa, what makes it a sure thing now that it's there now i mean they could get to know each other and have a connection but that girl got a lot going for herself and i'm not saying he don't he couldn't keep a hold or deserve a person like that i just don't know if emily is going to want to stick around with mitch and you know i mean i just think that she may look for the next hot guy coming along that has more than what Mitch has. So in my opinion, and I kind of agree with Aaron, I think that he should stick it out with Tina. Now, the whole, I see her as one of the guys when we hanging out in the daytime, you know, that's something that I think he need to look at, you know. And the other thing is, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he had a conversation However, he lied in that conversation. Let's talk about that lie. Because when the conversation was over with um, him and Emily, Tina asked him, tell me everything. And he really couldn't tell her everything because if he told her everything, it would make her feel some kind of way. And he knew that. The other big lie that he told is when she asked about, you know, considering coupling up. And he said, we never talked about that. Which you did talk about that with Emily. So that's a red flag. So mm, maybe I need to rethink that. Because, you know, Tina doesn't need to be with somebody that's not going to be honest with her and tell her the truth. So I know you guys probably were chomping at the bit before I said this. I'm glad you stuck around to hear me say it. But I don't know. I, I maybe, yeah, maybe Tina, because Tina deserves somebody better who's going to give her the truth. So uh, maybe Mitch needs to be by himself. You know, I don't know if Emily is going to stick it out with him. She, she might for the short term, but I don't see that long term. So we'll see what happened with those three. And then we have someone that's have the first hideaway um, little escapade this season, which of course is da, 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 Ryan and Lexi. And they are doing great. 
I thought for a minute Ryan was going to kind of get his head turned by um, Emily, but I guess that ship has sailed. So he's been 100% all in with, uh, of course, Lexi. And honestly, if these two stick it out for a long haul, they might be one of the contenders in the final four, in my opinion, for um, Love Island Australia season three. So We'll have to see, but they definitely have a lot of hot chemistry. They seem like they're extremely compatible. I'm just looking forward to seeing what they got going on um, throughout the rest of the season. Hopefully, Casa Amor don't throw this whole thing on its head. But so far, um, Lexi and Ryan are doing great. There were a couple of um, challenges, which was the flasher dance, where they were all dressed up in 80s gear and doing... Looked like they were workout gear from the 80s that they were all competing with. And then they had one of us as line competition. So that was pretty cool. Um, if you want me to break down those challenges, I will. Let me know in the comment section. But for the most part, I like to highlight what really stuck out with this show uh, or this episode. And that's what I usually try to recap and break down. So... Again, I am going to put the full episode that you can watch, and then I'm going to follow it with the recap as well so we can talk about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.